Hello and welcome to the news. It's seven o'clock, it's Friday night, and it's Dad's La Soul Radio. On the way, a story about a dog with very floppy ears. But first of all, the boys from Dad La Soul meet artist Dan Lish. Yes, some proper talent in the studio for once. He talks working with Wu-Tang, b-boying in Brooklyn, and hanging out with the divs from Dad La Soul. Enjoy! Stop! Collaborate and listen. We are back with a brand new edition of the Dadler Soul Radio Show. 60 minutes of fatherhood, funk and foolishness. So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? There's something very important I forgot to tell you. Now, wait. You killed my father. I am your father. She told me that the dad was loaded. Dad! The Aber is only with a JCB and Bruce Lee's nunchuck. He was the baddest cat around until I showed up. Where do you hear this? Where do you hear this? Listen to this? <laughs> yeah, of course I'm listening. Too old for this shit. <laughs> it's episode 11 and we are back. Dadler Soul here to rap. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Dan Flanagan. Um, and I've got some friends here. What are my friends called? I don't know. Tell no, me your names. You're here on your own today. No one is in the room. You're just a voice in my head, aren't you? Yes. Are you also a voice in my head? I'm, I'm the voice of your conscience. I am screwed. <laughs> yeah, you're in <laughs> trouble, man. <laughs> Dad, the Soul Radio. 60 some minutes of fatherhood, funk and foolishness. Episode 11. And we have got some special, or a very special guest, haven't Ooh. we? Um, first of all, to my left... I've got who? Oh, my name is Mark Cropley, and I am a co-host of the Dad Soul Radio Show, which you are listening to right now. And to my right, I've got who? I'm, I'm Matt Dumbleton, and I somehow give up my time to tolerate the company of these lovely beings. You are our appropriate <laughs> adult. <laughs> That's worrying, oh God. isn't it? That's really worrying. He's younger than you. In it. Anyway, <laughs> we've also there's a man in the corner with not much hair except on his chinny chin 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 chin. Who Hi. are you, handsome? Marie Sylvania. <laughs> 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 are you from the Sylvanian families? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm Dan Lish. Dan Lish. And you're lovely, aren't you, Dan Lish? Yeah, I'm all right. You're all right. It's all <laughs> um, Yeah, Dan's come along being a father of two lovely girls. He's mm. also a pretty renowned artist, illustrator, DJ. Yeah. You still do it? <laughs> are you a that, DJ bit, as well? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. A uh, mm. bit, bit of that breakdancing stuff. And yeah. we're going to... Knackered knees. Knackered knees. Mm. You're going to go into... We're going to probe you later, Daniel, if that's mm. all right. That's fine. Um, so... Well, okay. A bit of probing going on on the show we, later we, on. We've <laughs> double locked the doors. Mark, what else is coming up in tonight's show? Well, just as I turn around and grab my little crib sheet there, thank you very much for warning about We are going to be talking about uh, support for new dads in the show. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how you feel as a new dad, whether you're going to get support from friends, family, from the NHS. The midwives. From the midwives. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we're going to have some music, which has been chosen by Dan mm -hmm. uh, this week. So if you don't like yeah. it, you can blame Dan. I'll give you his address at oh, the yes. end of the yeah, show. Yeah, I'll explain why I chose them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. We have got a new feature called Dad Brag. Dad Brag. Dad Bragg, which is featured with Billy Bragg, no? No, it's, it's, an, it's oh, okay. an evening with Billy Bragg and Billy Bragg's dad. Okay, no worries. Dad and, uh, Yeah, so there's, there's plenty to talk about on today's show. But first of all, yeah. we need to kind of catch up with what's been happening with what us. What else? In our daily, daily graph. So, Crubbers, tell these lovely people at home and these lovely people on the camera, Hello! Because we are videoing it, so... Um, Obviously, we're on Mixcloud, Soundcloud, but do check us out on YouTube and you'll get to see how handsome we really are. Oh, yes. Crubbers... Tell us how you stop us. Tell us what? what? I'm going to wrap up the entire <laughs> what you, show. What have you been up to, dude? <laughs> oh, oh, not, not a lot. No? We're no? Good. Fascinating. You? How are you doing? I've been doing stuff. I okay. Week. Well, actually, last week, oh, he went to the... Uh, <laughs> last week, I went up to the Body World Museum. In fact, on Sunday. What's Body Works? Body, Body World. It is it's in the middle of uh, london in piccadilly circus it's over three floors and it has plasticized bodies basically people have donated their bodies to not just to medical science to this particular brand of companies i think they're all over the world there's new york peckham uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and they i don't know exactly what they do i did read it and i've forgotten but they they kind of inject the bodies with all sorts of shit and it, it kind of gets rid of the organic matter and it, they, they will last longer than a mummified body. Wow. But they've got these bodies in different states of, 
kind of undress if you want to call it that so some bodies you can see the spine some of the nervous system which mm. is just really weird did you like, take your kids up or did <laughs> yeah, you just go on your own no no the kids went up too yeah <laughs> okay. so so uh, and there were some really good exhibitions on how smoking affects your body how drinking affects your body and for me recently sort of taking a break from drinking it's made me think a little bit more about maybe that making that break a bit longer Okay. Um, and actually, you asked me on the way up here, well, you know, when was I going to start drinking again? It's, it's actually this, when this show goes out, it's my birthday. Yay. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. So at this point, if you're listening to it, I'm really drunk. <laughs> are you? Are you drinking for your birthday? That was the thing. And said, when are you going to drink next? And I thought, well, I'm going to have a drink on my birthday, but maybe I should have a drink beforehand just to... to you know, should I really wait until my birthday and have a drink? Is it like oh. build-up training? Well, this is it. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. What's, what's the advice, guys? Should I have a couple of beers don't ask on the lead-up? I'm, yeah, I'm I so know. far out of the drinking I, game. I don't really drink. Either. Right, okay. No. I've always had a little bit of the... Snap. <laughs> Snap. <laughs> yeah. Wind. <laughs> What? Irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah, that's oh, that's right. it. Yeah, yeah. Bad on. knees. That's, that's what gave me it. Yes. So I never bothered drinking. <laughs> no, I, I just like. Was yeah. that the. Yeah. Oh, no, that wasn't no, to, oh, right. to hit Flanagan okay, yeah, if he says checking. something nasty. Just oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is up. not all right. <laughs> not, not all right. All right. It's, it's bullying. It's picking up the knife. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, that was a very good trip. So, uh, yeah. Did you learn? Did I, I did learn. I did have a good time. So, thank you to the people at Body Worlds for inviting us up. Nice. Um, to have a look around. And actually, another thing, just a quick one. While we were there, they had a no car day in London. A lot of the roads were closed off. So, you guys probably saw a picture. Is that where you were having lunch in the middle of Regent Street? Regent Street. Street. Oh, they put deck chairs there. And actually, actually because it rained no one was sitting them so i just dusted them off i'm <laughs> sat there like this people are walking past my kids are just sat like they, they yeah. didn't give an, an f they sat down they opened their lunch boxes so there's all these people shopping Love my it. kids me and my kids are the only people on these deck chairs in the middle of regent street have you have you like searched the hashtag and the location regent street to see how many people in london well, yeah. took photos of you guys going look at these for come from the countryside for a picnic <laughs> in the road help the homeless has just gone one step too far isn't it Oh, dude, that's wicked. You're not from around these parts. But without sort of taking us down too much of that path, we, we then went, took a, um, an underground over to uh, Tower Bridge. That was closed off that area as well. So we actually managed to walk uh, down the road of Tower Bridge. When we got there, there was this whole sort of um, theatre thing going on with them, you know, because it's next to the Tower of London. Yeah. So the king was in the Tower of London saying, get away, you peasants. And these peasants are going, oh, kill the king, kill the king. My kids are going, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Wicked. Yeah, so. The peasants revolt. It was, they were revolting. Yeah. Talking yes. about peasants revolting. Yeah. Yes. What have you How been are up you? To? Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I've, I've been training for the uprising, actually. I, <laughs> last night I went to my first ever, it's called Modern Sword Fighting. Right. Um, yeah. And it's battle heritage. So it's, it's in a medieval style. Now, um, I do a lot of stuff with swords in performance and I just I was starting to feel especially after meeting some fencers who've been in the audience Were they offensive? They weren't offensive but they possibly offenced in okay. the sense that um, there's one guy George George Livermore I put a shout out to him he's an Italian rapier master fencer international and um, he was kind enough to sort of come up to us afterwards and said really great show looked wonderful do you do any functional fighting? And I kind of had to look him in the eye and go, no, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all really, it's nice performing stuff. It's all that for looks good for footage. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it, that doesn't mean it's easy. It's taken yeah. us years to train it, but actually I thought, right. I, integrity is important here. So if yeah. I'm going to be rubbing shoulders with a bunch of sword fighting knights, I need to learn to sword fight. So I went along to Worthing high to, um, MSF battle heritage and, um, got soundly wrapped in padding and and beaten with swords it was amazing it was you got wrapped in padding and beaten with swords out of school yeah the education so no I wonder know. you home school crop like, Jesus, that's what it's come to exactly yeah, yeah you don't want to go near those the schools school, the school was closed actually they, they just hide the room there but i, th I think <laughs> the spoil thing, the story the thing i find interesting is that i've studied martial arts for years since i was a kid and um i've been learning like wing chun recently and it's very flowy bruce lee and it's all it's all very practiced you know form focused stuff so it, it's it doesn't have that, that edge of brawling and this really does and mm. and i wasn't sure how it was going to sit with my sort of softer side and i've got to be honest after all of the years that i spent putting to bed that fighty mat it was really interesting because it's still there. I've put him to bed, mm. but he's still there. And, and, and things come up, especially as a parent to three. 
and mm. uh, things come up and you know I don't get fighty but well, I, I think find you need my... that though as a male that yeah. that's the balance well I get sulky if I can't get fighty mm. and I felt great I came out I came out of this like just, I was dripping with sweat I thought I was going to vomit mm. on the way home it was a real workout Good for night. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I didn't, I didn't spend a penny on alcohol. So. Mm, it's fun. Um, you've started boxing. It. Oh, you've started mm, boxing. Exactly. I felt exactly the same. I didn't feel like I wanted to chuck up, but I was just dripping with sweat. Yeah. And it was just very hardcore, full on smacking pads. Because where I go to yoga and it's it's ninety nine percent female. Yeah. And I'm in a household with ninety nine percent female, apart from Pip the hamster. And those my <laughs> your brother secrets. from another mother that's right yeah, yeah. yeah um so i wanted to get that balance and chat with some lads and smack things nice punch things around and that's why you've come tonight isn't it that's right yeah, yeah. so is it having uh, hands up in this room actually at the men who do yoga now so is that is that all of us right okay yeah, we're that's all good. model men yeah, yeah. yeah look at that <laughs> did you what did you say model men or modern i did say men. model i meant modern <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like dad the role <laughs> We are role models. Yes, that's it. Nice. Dan, Dan, what have you been up what to, man? I, I, I went down a press. Hello, I, you? Went, I went down a press. Oh, that's not offensive, is it? Not at all. It's casually racist. It's fine. Um, yeah, I've got a very old pal of mine that I've known since he's about we're about four years old. I see him every couple of years. So Bristol is my one of my favourite cities. So I went down to see him, check in on him, wandered around the streets of Bristol, got lost. It's constantly, um, I kept seeing allergies posters. There's a brilliant DJ group called The Allergies, who, strangely enough, we were interviewing this Friday. I but thought you was... meant to do with like pollen count in <laughs> yeah, Bristol no. or something. <laughs> no, you the pollen there. count is higher today. Yeah, um, they're, they're funky brothers. And yeah, it was really nice because this, this guy, Gad, that so I've known for 40 odd years, we went for dinner and had a couple of quiet drinks and we talked and talked and talked. And all throughout our life, we'd gone and got drunk or chased women or did what young men do. And it was a complete change of our relationship to sit there and just talk for maybe six hours, really. Mm. You know, romantic. Romantic. It's the influence of you, lads. So rather than, you know, having a punch We're up, rubbing right? off you the right way. You want yeah. to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, w I went to Bristol. And yeah. that was, mm. that I've never was been. been. I'd love to go because it's Beautiful. very artistic and music. Uh, yeah, like a good it's a hell of culture. history. Yeah, That's I right. wandered around the, uh, got lost in the museum and just... Because I can't read maps because I'm dyspraxic, I always get lost. So rather than hating that now, I've embraced it and think, well, I'll just go down there and I'll just go down and mm. see what's happening. You know, I'll, I'm a grown up, so I will, you know, ask somebody. Just ask make someone. Them. Yeah, find your did way. You, yeah. Um, yeah. Did you drink any water while you were there, out the tap? It's, mm. the brace yourself, it's going to be crap. Go on. No, did you? No. You didn't? Why? Oh, well, okay. I, I know the guy that's in charge of all the water coming into Bristol. He's the operations director for Bristol Water. So shout out to Richard. Hey, oh, Richard. I thought you were going to make a joke. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was <laughs> Well, it kind of was a bit of a... I was going to say, you should say thank you, Richard, if you did. I, I well, you, I probably you, had a cup of tea while I was there. Well, there you go. You drank some water. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Anyway. Does Richard fluoridate the water? Oh, I don't know. Ask you don't like that, Richard. do you? No, I, I, I'm, we're really well, lucky. It's chlorinated, in Sussex. but it's, you know... He used to actually be ops director for Southern toxin. Water as well, so... Uh, sorry, that's not... Uh, yeah, don't, yeah don't you wander up the hills to get your fresh water I like do, a weirdo? Yes. Oh, no. I mean, I, not like a weirdo, but I do go up the hills. No, but you look like a weirdo, away. so they're going up the stairs, like yeah. set hills. No, yeah, I, I why, do. Do you do, why do you walk up the hill to get water when you can turn on the tap? It, it's If you look into the nature of water... It's still very mysterious. There's going to be a fourth stage of water that so-called scientists are, are looking into. Um, it's it's the process for me that means a lot, and it's it's quite empowering. Just get my own water. My children come with me, and they don't really anymore now. They get a bit bored. So, so of it. what's the sorry? But, what's the actual um, process for going to get water? What actually happens? It, then? Well, it's not a mystical process. It's me going into the beautiful countryside. I'm, I'm going to go there. I take my wellies off, my shoes and socks off. I, I just ground myself at, you know, it's called earth. Yeah, it's earth. Yeah, yeah. That stuff. At bare feet, feet, get in the water, fill up 25 litres. Just it's out just of the stream? Beautiful... No, never out the stream because... What, what is it, a spring? It's come straight out the rock. So it's, okay. a, suppose it's, a, it's an aquifer um, which has filled up, or supposedly the water was dropped 60 to 80 years ago. It's had that whole time to fill, filter. Wow, and it's it's coming out, so it's not um, over spill off or whatever you call okay. it, the farmer's fields. So it's coming out the ground, and and I'm collecting it. And is this spray. a secret location? No, it's just behind the uh, um, <laughs> shepherd and dog, right? Yeah, pub in uh, Falking. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
That's, no Falking Way. That's <laughs> Falking <fantastic>. Hill. <laughs> I think I know where you mean. Actually, Hill the Village. indoors used to live there, actually. Yeah, yes. but they, they had a pump. They got a pump. Yeah. So it used to be there's, there's the river runs down the road, doesn't it, there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, don't get it from the river. No. Uh, because that like, water runs and everything. And yeah, and loads of stuff. Yeah, or, yeah, I've done that before where you go and fill, fill a flask from a um, river I mean, and I've then got further the stuff. up you find a dead sheep. But. Yeah, well, there's a dead fox cub in there, you know, not too long ago. In, right. You know, I, think there's, um, really I think there's so, the some process is great. Some places in Wales where um, the water's taken thousands of years to get through, and that's just like mind blowing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's Roman rain. That's well. <laughs> the, well, there was a woman so in, clean. in in in. Um, I think she. I can't remember what part of England she is, but she's very very knowledgeable with this stuff. And um, she was saying there's actually a, a water that is birthed in the earth that comes out, so it's not about the precipitation. Woo. And so it is quite woo woo, but it's it's brilliant. So she's wow. a very clever lady. I think that's really admirable, Dan. Yeah, I did, yeah, because I, I, like I, I've looked a lot at um, you've probably seen yourself uh, the, the the impact that focusing on particular thoughts and emotions mm. has to the actual structure. That's right. Yeah, of, the Doctor uh, Iyamoto, isn't it? The um, yeah, yeah, and and just that in itself makes me really conscious. I I went through a spate in whenever we worked in London. I was really really ill, so I mm. kind of cut out eating anything in London and took a packed lunch. Then I had to cut out drinking the water and I got to the point where I, I wouldn't even get a bottle of water in London. I'd, I'd fill up a bottle at home and take it with me and it, I'd stopped being sick. It, and I define it as an energetic protection. Mm-hmm. And that's what it feels like. These two are thinking what the... I don't, I don't know. know. You're going to have a I'm totally I'm open quite to that. I'm quite interested. Actually, another thing at the Body Worlds this week, we went on this scanner thing, and, and it came up. And I'm, I'm, I've been doing things to make myself healthier, but I know I'm not there yet. I've still got a bit of chub. There were some things I was surprised about, but it actually gave me a metabolic age of 52. And which, you're not even 40? No, that was scary, you know? Okay. And I'm thinking, well, I need to do some stuff to bring that down. I'm not going to be 52. Do you know what you need to do? What? You need to get ready. Do you know why you need to get ready? Because Dan's got a segue. <laughs> I'm not saying that. They, we, I thought we could have some music. And guess what the music's called? Well, hang on. Are we going to get uh, Dan to tell us I why? Did, I think oh, we want oh, the story. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan, Dan, Dan. Dan. Well, Dan. Mis- Hello. Mr. Flanagan asked me for five tunes, songs. Yep. Yep. And uh, I assumed that it was to do with personal parts of my life and in a chronological order. So the first one is when my mum used to play a lot of Motown, you know, hits, and I used to jump around on my space hopper, basically. Wicked. Or I used to have my pyjamas on with a, a sock in my, the crack of me, not my arse, but the... Um, <laughs> As and I used to pretend I was a lion, and there was a, a, a Booker T in the MGs. I used to just go around in circles on my jump and roar as a lion. And all these these young memories are from my mum's record. So this is this is oh, one wicked. of them. That's a really out. good story. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's nice. So what's this one? This is the Temptations and That's right. And get ready. Thanks, Dan. Wicked.
This is the Dad of Soul Radio Show featuring Dan Lish. Um, you can get in contact with us at www.dadlessoul.com. You can also get in contact as contact with us where dan uh, 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 uh on the facebook on that there facebook that go down the soul there's a private group there just for daddies no mummies you can come in there and have a little conversation tell some jokes listen to some tunes and have a conversation and apart from chatting rubbish on the radio what else do we do dan we are a grassroots organization that are set up to help dads and kids battle social isolation so we put on very cool events but we're going to go into that in a little bit because now we've got some new, club, for... new clubs, new clubs coming up. New clubs, that's really exciting news. And not golf, no, not golf. No, clubs. not golf. No. So, ready for your intro? Am I ready? One, two, three, four. Da da festo, da festo, da festo, da festo, da festo. Boom! It's so much nicer when Laura Vane did that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yes, Laura. What's the da festo this week? Da festo. For those who don't know, is our little segment we do we talk about a news report that's gone on in the big bad world that affects us as human beings but more part, more importantly us as dads so i was tinkering on the old keyboard and i came across a report on the bbc which was from the nct which is the national national childbirth trust um so you, you probably did it as you you know when you have a baby you pay a fortune to nct to learn how to be a parent but let me just check the figures on this. Do you? Do you pay a fortune to NCT? Could, I mean, I haven't well, paid a anything. A couple of hundred quid. From really? where? Yeah. To, to join who? NCT. Sure it was. Who you had to pay? I, I, well, do you have to join NCT? You don't have to. Oh, no. okay. No, it's, oh, it's right. not. Okay, cool. I was going to say, because no one's that's, taking... That's why I... Yeah. Being a new dad, like, nearly at the moment, no one's taking any money oh, so off yeah, me. Yeah, I missed yeah. an invoice somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, no, they were saying there's a, a third of new dads are suffering from postpartum depression. So, obviously, it's a huge post thing. natal. Oh, right, okay. Post natal. What did I say? Post but. Do you know? Okay. Carry on with what you're saying because that really just rung a bell there. Yeah, yeah, because obviously, it's a big thing with mums with a change of hormones and change of circumstances. So, there's, there's a load of support around that. But nobody actually, actually asks the dads how they're yeah. doing. This isn't a mum versus mm. dad thing. It's actually. I remember when I had <clears throat> uh, my son, actually, I, I the night. Um, I had my son, I went around and saw Dan because my wife had been on hospital for a month because my son was really early and she was still there. And it was, it was really weird because nobody actually checks in. And I kicked you back out of the house, didn't I? You did. You said, I don't care. Take your bloody biscuits. <laughs> 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 no, you and your lovely wife were very, very sympathetic and very I caring. Remember, I'm sorry. Well, well, <laughs> fine, it's only a defining moment in my life, Daniel. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd hear about you, no, without going into depth about your birth stories. Did you feel supported properly? Um, I never, funny enough, it's You weren't only, even there, were you? No, I wasn't. Dead apart. Um, I had a lot of family about, a lot of support like that, so I never felt that I needed it. It's only now with a new kid on the way, sort of seven years after my last, that I'm sort of actively seeing it through other people's eyes. So I'm going out there going, well, actually, I don't feel that I need it, especially now with three kids. Mm. But is there support there for dads? And actually, I've, I've not been offered anything. Okay. Um, I went to um, a Baby Matters group the other day. So the mm. midwife has said, Sophie, you should go along to this. I know you've had three kids, but things have changed the way we advise you to do certain things. And it'd be nice if your husband went too. And I went, yeah, I'm going to go mm. because I want to see what this is about. I want to feel yeah. supported. First of all, walked into this room full of women, felt a bit awkward, you know, and they were mm. kind of looking at me going, oh, my God, you know, we're going to talk about breasts and stuff here. Um, and then another dad came in and I, I felt like going up fist bump. And I was yes, like, yeah. Bro. I bet he was like, yeah. <laughs> But us being there, actually, the, the lady running the course did involve us, and they said dads can do this too. Nice. I, I actually felt involved, but I, I think if the midwife hadn't asked Sophie to try and get me along, and maybe this other dad as well, and bearing in mind there was probably 15 women in there and two blokes, so it was only a very small percentage. Yeah. But I did, I did feel that I was meant to be part of that group rather than on the outside. I've, mm. I've got a question in terms of the fact that, the, like, obviously it's a baby matters, so it's focused about the baby. Yes. Um, but did you find that, although you were said, oh, dads can do this too and dads can be involved, did you find that advice that was offered and tips that were offered were quite mum-specific? So there was quite a lot towards women because there was stuff about breastfeeding. Um, but when she was talking about touch of the baby, she said, and she would say, you know, put the baby on your skin. Did yeah. they say anything about how dads can support breastfeeding mums? Um, like directly, <laughs> okay, if you're a dad, 
here are some ideas. No, they didn't like that, but what I We think, need that. We need if you're that. listening, yeah, yeah. we do, because Kate's breastfed for the two and a half years, and, and, you know, other than trying to keep her plate piled and just keep feeding her so that her body's got stuff to give, it's... It, I, I found it really hard to do anything other than kind of just go, ah, oh, and... Yeah. I, it's, it's really you, difficult. You feel like it's, a bit of a tool, don't you? You know, that's the thing, and... Um, I, I did feel that there was enough advice there. They're saying when, when our kids were um, young or when they were babies, if they cried, the advice was to leave them a little. Don't pick them up straight away because they're used to it. Now that advice is gone. I would go completely them against up straight. that, yeah, because mm. the stuff that that, the impact that can have nervous system wise That's and emotionally yeah. For, yeah. for babies in, in later life, I, mm -hmm. I think my big bold writing is never ignore a crying no, baby. No, I, 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 I agree. Um, what what was nice? The lady said, you know, skin to skin contact, and she Kangaroo said, if, care. if the mother can't do it, she said, Dad, you do it too. Do it as well, even if the mother can do it. Oakley was in Skaboo, the special care unit, for sixteen days, and um, I was just like, as I walked through the door, the tops coming off. And, <laughs> and, but so so That's many quite a lot of your dads. life, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know it. Even people, tonight, people pay for that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's scary, <laughs> but a lot of the other dads were kind of like a little bit. Ooh, 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 mm. Hang on, and um, it, I think it's so important. It, I'm going to be that yeah. dad now. Do yeah. it, man. I and wasn't... it feels so good. It's beautiful, and when you get home, or like you know, you'll all be coming home together or a home birth. But mm. when you get a moment by yourself, just put just put your hands on your chest where your baby lays, and just feel through your hands what your baby feels mm. through their entire body. I mean, I think that's so going to be nurturing. amazing because I felt I don't. Mm. Well, I will say maybe I was absent for them as a baby. I was like, do you know what? I don't like babies. I'm not interested in them. I can't wait until I can run around with them and be back. Yeah, when can he kick a ball? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I was mm. looking forward to that. Now I'm looking forward to this one being a baby. And then a little bit of me feels slightly guilty because I'm going to give this baby a lot more attention than I did my others. It's, I get it. I get yeah. it because you know I've got three kids and there's years between them. And, you know, Anthony turns 18 in October mm -hmm. and Oakley is two and a half. So mm. me as a dad, I've evolved immensely and I've got Emma in the middle of that as well. So mm. Anthony got the toughest rap because at the time that he was born, I was a full-time nursery nurse and play worker and a preschool manager. So mm. I had these very fixed, like, curriculum-enforced yeah. ideas mm. and hellish ways. Indoctrinated. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I you know... I learned pretty quick. I mm. saw it pretty quick. I think he was about six months old and I quit working with kids mm. and, and, and was just like, no, I'm processing my son. And mm. I, that, that's, that's so not what yeah. What about you, Dan? What was you, I was you prepared? I was going to say because I, I, I was, it was a lovely experience, a beautiful experience. And I... How old are your kids? Felt. Um, Abigail is 11 and mm. Elsa is nine. Um, Elsa was... In the Brighton Central Hospital. Mm. Uh, sorry, Abigail was. Did I say Abigail? Yeah. I'm getting confused. Um, eldest was in the hospital, and then our second was in the bedroom at home. But I, I always felt a, a, a loving, you know, environment. We didn't have any family around, but I just felt very comfortable with it. I didn't feel like a bit of a, you know, an outsider. I mean, you can't, you can't do much when, you know, the baby's being breastfed, apart from, if. The child is very clingy and just needs to be there all the time. Like our first was quite sort of full on all the time. I just had to feed my wife, you know, while, <laughs> yeah. while she's she's doing her business. Um, but it, it was a lovely thing. I think we used to get to sing and sign all these other clubs, so they learned sign language and all that before she could speak. And I, I didn't really feel like <coughs> you felt like I was a bit like on the outside. And, yeah, I think I made myself on the outside because I was out working, you know, yeah. and and I wasn't. Before I had kids, I didn't want them. I hated babies. I hated kids. You know, they were noisy. Yeah, yeah so no, you've got, I did. There's some issues in there somehow. Yeah. So I think, I think I'm an only a... child. You know, right. my parents split up when I was one. Um, I had some dodgy um, stepdads. Yeah, there you go. Both are now dead. Mm. Good. <laughs> That's another story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Counselling with Dan Lish. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're, they're, it's going to yes. come out. It's, it's epigenetics. Yeah. If you look into that, it's very. It's a very strong. Not not a theory, but it's this sort of poison in a way can affect generations down the line yeah. but if you if you bring up your children in a nurturing even from the the beginning when they're inside the mum 
and she's really relaxed and happy. Mm. It has such an effect on the, the child's life yeah. and the next generation. I mean, I think now, you know, our kids have a really good life and, and I am a really bloody good dad. Mm. Um, it's just that baby time. I don't think time. that was ever in question. No, 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 no. And I'm not suggesting that anyone. I love the baby time. Um, I just, yeah. I'm looking forward to it now. Yeah, good. I'm looking forward to the baby time. <laughs> nice. What, what about you, Dan? Um, I was quite lonely. I was working a lot. Right. I think I had a, <clears throat> about a week off. I just started my new business. So I was getting up to do the, the nighttime feeds but I was still working. I'd still have the laptop open. And I think there was one, I think quite a profound moment. It's beautiful because it's got a photograph of it. And it's where my little lad was beside me on the sofa. And I looked down at him and it felt like my heart had been opened. And this, honestly, it's like this sea of rainbow had come out. <laughs> and I have never seen anything more beautiful in my entire life. He just looked <laughs> angelic. And it was, that's what scared me because I thought, are you mine? You're yeah. just too beautiful. How the, <laughs> how the hell did I have a part in creating you? Um, yeah. Did, did anyone have uh, the actual birth? And I, and I remember this quite clearly from the first one. The second and third, it was kind of a bit more routine. But did anyone have that weird out-of-body experience when you're stood there in a the room, it's all going off, you kind Were of... you done the business end? No, I didn't. I didn't look. Um, <laughs> and funny enough, story about that. Al Alfie, the first one, had to be pulled out with forceps. And one of the, I think there was like fifteen people in that room. Um, there was anaesthetist, all sorts, and there was a student nurse. And uh, she said, "Oh, do you want to come and have a look?" And I said, "No, I don't want to spoil the romance." <laughs> And the midwives laughed and she went, oh, that's so beautiful. You know, you want to see the baby together at the first time. The midwife goes, I don't think she understood what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. yeah, so what the, the, the out-of-body experience. Yeah, sorry, going back to the out-of-body. So as, as this, this baby comes out suddenly into this room, I just looked at it and I just felt all weirded out, like I'd gone above myself and I wasn't really in the room and I felt really weird because this thing was there and it was mine and... Uh, it had been a 14, 15 hour labour and, you mm. know, Sophie was just like on drugs by then. And yeah, I, was, I think I did have a bit of that. Did you? It was a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Not as sort of freaky as what you want to explain. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of a disjoint, a bit of a yeah. disconnect where, you know, something so immense has just happened as yeah. a father. Yeah, you're trying to be involved as much as you can, but it's, you've always got that little separation. But I was down the other end. Right. Yeah, briefly. <laughs> but you're was, like a veteran, was, weren't was, you? Yeah. If you were yeah. Nan, that's, you don't talk about Nan. Yeah, so come on, Dad, have a look. Yep, yeah, that's a girl. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. But, yeah, but, uh, yeah it was, I, I know what you mean. It, was, uh, it's, it, it, it is quite freaky. Sorry, there's some pinging down there. What is it? Nothing to do with it. No. Me. Phone's off. Anyway, done. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was weird, wasn't it? It was. What yeah, a weird. Just, it was nice. I'll just, just, throw, throw my experience in. Um, I... I can definitely relate to what you guys are describing in that I kind of, it's like a pineal gland moment. It's almost like... What's a pineal gland? Sorry. The, pineal. The, so, pineal. Yeah, pineal, pineal. pineal. Tomato, um, tomato. It's, uh, it's the third eye, but it it's physically exists as a part of your oh, brain. Oh, it's up there. Okay. Yeah. So um, the other third eye. <laughs> it's just wrong that's road the and wrong <laughs> road. <laughs> that's where the baby came um, out of. So yeah, it, it, it felt like some kind of like big cosmic universal thing um with all, with all or just with the first all three were born by a cesarean oh, okay two of them by emergency cesarean right so i can say that I, I can relate and i had that although what i found for me was that it kind of it trickled in the background for a couple of days because there was a part of me that's just like right engaged you know mm. shit's going down this is serious stuff hold it together just hold it together and and it will be all right, and it was really close with Anthony. You know, he did you go down the business end with cesarean? Because they said don't, because it looks like some sort of horror flick. I've I've seen parts of of both of, of the mothers of my various children. A bit that like your they exhibition on Sunday, seen. yeah, it was, yeah, and um, yeah, and, and you know, with but there's Kate a bit of Oakley. a disconnect, isn't it? Because there's so much blood and everything coming out, but you sort of. That doesn't have any effect. Well, it's not me. That, it didn't yeah. have any effect. It's almost like not seeing that. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's sort of like it's not weird. survival instinct, but it's completely natural. You don't... Now, now you think, oh, God. And especially if you're in a third person, you're looking at 
some you know cesarean or, or on the box or whatever you think yeah. oh god that's a bit but when you're there you just say it's yeah it's no, nothing it doesn't phase you at all <laughs> you just get stuck in and as, you know as long as your partner and your, your wife is is good and healthy, that's what it's about isn't it yeah it's that as you can be in that position yeah and that's Literally. your thing i suppose that's your role as, yeah. as dad yeah. in that moment, the role. isn't it that's the role can yeah. i just pick up on something you said earlier about that report about uh postnatal depression with dad yeah. so is that uh, i was going to look into that is that actually a thing that is dads can stuff? it's recognized so yeah. um somebody posted something somebody went to college with haven't really you know you've got people on facebook you sometimes see them come up but you don't really have any interactions with them mm. you know yeah. they're just there a bit like me you and matt <laughs> me you and matt yeah. yeah yeah um somebody posted something saying does anyone else's partners not do f all around the house he's been at home since 2 p.m today i've come home from work he won't feed the baby he won't do this won't that and now we've had an argument and he's gone out and I, I read this thing and basically there's lots of men and women going on there saying oh you should kick him out he's an arsehole and actually i thought i wonder if wow. he's got post anyone depression asked him if he's all right yeah. I, yeah. and actually i was going to go back later and comment on it and then i couldn't find it and then it didn't happen i, I was going to say i was thinking about what i should say i'm thinking you know, actually, has anyone asked him if he's right? Maybe he's mm. suffering. And then I thought, oh, can men get postnatal depression? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And even even if it's not going to be labelled as postnatal depression, men get depression. Everybody can, is yeah. susceptible to that. Mm. So it's and, a life changing thing as well, having a child, isn't it? So your hormones are. Yeah, for mm. sure. And and you know, a massive responsibility. And yeah, I just I think like cut him some slack you know it's, it's really easy to be Where, opinionated yeah, and look the from the though? outside because he might just be a really lazy if yeah. he sits on the sofa and actively has got the energy to stand up and say i'm not doing that that's not my job then yeah he's an arsehole maybe you want to think about like whether you want to be but yeah, if he's getting yeah. really insular and just quiet and just yeah just you know, yeah, he might be really there, there's something surely I, you know my thing would be as a as a <clears throat> mother as a partner as a wife they would know what normal was like and if he's suddenly changed so, but we're assuming a, a, you know don't forget that as much as he's a new dad she's a new mum and physically yeah. her hormone system it's mm. you know i grew up with sisters have you ever actually tried to tell somebody Okay, like your hormones are affecting your mood right now because that, that is a death sentence. <laughs> because that. in that moment, That's your future with the girls, it's I kind understand of like, this rewiring going on constantly, you know, even from yeah. the age of nine, you know, or what, what, you're gonna yeah. have two teenage girls soon. Yeah, well, I wouldn't mind a third, but I don't think Karen, no, but I mean, they, they, all those hormones, all those teenage oh, yeah, girls, yeah, it's on, happening now, really. Mm -hmm. uh, do you take shelter? Mm -hmm. Have you got armor? No. Yeah. Do you, do you run, pip, a, run a crop? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a guard hamster. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, that, and, and maybe I should go back and find that conversation again and just butt in. It might be a bit late now, but I think that also shows how important the work we're trying to do. Now, whether he could be helped or not, if we can help people like him be better fathers, it's going to help the whole family. It's not just helping the dad. It's one of two things, yeah. isn't it? He either needs a bit of dad schooling or it sounds to me like you need someone to put their arms around him and just say whatever it is. It's all right, right mate. It's okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and be there for him, you know, allow him a space to, to share what's happening for him. And if he can yeah. have what we've got and this support network and what we've created with our groups. He can invite him to the group. Yeah, yeah come along to the group. Well, that's, that's the thing. I think we can. And then I know he can be, hopefully be a better dad and the mum can relax. The kid will be better. You know, we can have all those effects. It's yeah. not just... Mm. It's not just like we're the dads and we're going to do our dad thing and that's it. It's all due, which is a bit like, sorry to say, fathers for justice. I know they've got a cause, they've yes. got a reason, but it is very dad, dad, dad. That's not weird. Like we're family mm. through the dads, through the support, aren't we? I yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. So that was the dad festo. Dad festo. You got to issue a warning. I'm, honestly, like, no warning, he, man. No he, step back. Hearing issues, so yeah. I need to protect I, myself. Where's from your blue badge? Put noise. a blue badge on. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back next week with a blue badge on and, your face and beat you with it. <laughs> So, guys, we're going to have a bit of music. We need a yes. bit of an intro. And then we're going to go into after our new feature, Dad Brag. Dad Brag. <laughs> all, our, all segments sound the same, don't they? Dad Brag. Dad this is Dadless Soul Radio. This is 60-something minutes of fatherhood, funk, and foolishness. And we've got a tune. Daniel Lish. But it's what not is funk. It doesn't have to be funk. Yeah. The tune is funk. The conversation is funky. Okay. We are funky. Sorry, Look at sorry, us. Sorry, Look sorry. how handsome we are. Is the song foolish? No. Yeah, it's the specials. So, um, what's special about the specials, Dan? It's very special. Well, be, 
I, I um, growing up in the, the early 80s, yes. getting into my early teenage years, so this music was always around me, although I didn't gravitate to it. It was always part of that, that sort of subliminal soundtrack. So that's why I thought, let's put some specials on. Excellent. Nice. Wicked. Yeah. I didn't, my mum was a big fan of the special, so... Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm looking up. at your eyes, looking at him. You two are going to have some massive hippie loving soon. Well, we just, Honestly, got, just, we just got brown eyes. You two got blue eyes. I mean, it's, just, just, it's, it's all gang war. It's his crypt yeah, yeah. blood. It's going down right. <laughs> you just ruined my joke then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Go on then. Much too much. I'm much too... Too much, too young. The specials. The specials. My mum said I was special. And this is 1979. Special. 1970. <laughs> this is the year that I was born. What year? So I 79. Bet, I, yeah, I bet my mum was to this. It's her anthem. Oh God, I was eight. I'm 729 yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Wow. Let's stop talking and start listening to Joan. Music. Let's play it. Joan. This is one of the sides of the live EP. It's probably the only chance you'll get to see it on television because other family programmes like Top of the Pops find it quite offensive. It's called Too Much Too Young. You don't need too much, much too young. You're married with a kid when you could be having fun with me. You don't need too much, much too young. And now you're married with a son when you should be having fun with me. You've done too much, much too young You're married with a kid when you could be having fun with a man Too much, too young. The specials. That was a phenomenal. That sent sort of shivers mm. down my spine. You can't undervalue the work that they did or the stuff that they created in '79. The UK was a horrible, horribly depressed thing. Yes. And to put those two different like cultures. That's just fun. Yeah, a bit uh, like the, 19, 2019. Yeah, not too dissimilar. Not too <laughs> mm. dissimilar. Political unrest and. Panic on the streets of London. The end of the world for the rising seas. Do you want to rebel? No, we're on a rudderless ship and I'm fine with that. I'm I'm a friend of chaos. All those (laughs) who wander are not lost. And turn your telly off, switch off your phones. Is that why don't you? Is that why don't you? Turn off your telly (laughs) and do something more interesting. Do you know, I'm with you on that one. It was was actually a little way into Brexit. I think when the first October came round, I was like, do you know what? I'm done with news. And that was it. I don't actively see. I hear it. I don't actively seek it anymore. Yeah. Right. The news comes on, I switch That's off. Right. It's the it's yeah. the voice of the empire. Yeah. Let's just turn it off. Dun, so dun, we're on a rudderless dun. ship, heading towards a big glacier that's going to fall into the ground, rise the sea waters by a meter, and wipe out Hull. Maybe. Anyway, yes. wow! <laughs> happy, 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 happy talk. I'm talking about things you like, like to do. do. This is a dadless old radio show where four men or three and a half men, if, if we're counting me. Because I'm only half a man. I was just going to ask who's the half man. Oh, yeah, so I was well, ready. I was call yeah. Him, but he's bigger than all of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This is Dad the Soul Radio, yeah. <laughs> and we are here to talk. Put your sword to sing, away. Put, 
You put the sword away. I got the signal. Sorry. I got this the makes signal. great radio, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, you have to anyway, watch it on YouTube. Where, where can you see us, Mark? If you wanted, or where do you have to listen to us, and where do you have to see us? Well, you can listen to us on Podbean, Podbean, SoundCloud, Audio, Audio, Audio Boom. Boom. iTunes, Uh, iTunes, Mixcloud, Um, and we also record. So this show, if you listen to it now, goes out on the fourth of October, and it's available thereafter. And then the following week, which be the what of October? Add seven, dude. (laughs) Eleven of October. (laughs) That's what homeschooling does. Add eleven because I was trying to think and talk at the same time. Add eleven. Yeah. Add eleven on the eleventh of October on the yeah. Friday. It'll go out on YouTube as a video pod. So and it'll be lovely. And then you can see us again. So you can see how handsome we are. It's Absolutely. going to be edited so, to two, two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and people see a lot of dancing. Yeah. Yeah. The specials. That was it. a good look. Anyway. We're back in the room. We've got, we got, another, we got another section. This is a new <laughs> section. This is a new new section. Basically, I think, you know, it's it's nice to talk about your kids and it's nice to talk about yourself. Um, but we are competitive dads. Okay? Just by our very nature. Are so this is. Oh, wait, do you not think so? No. no. What, just dads in general? I question that what, as well. What do you mean oh, by competitive oh, dads? <laughs> what do you this, mean I by forgot. trying to compare my children to your children? No, I just mean racism. No, at the school, like but just general. Or... Men are oh, competitive. Okay. okay. No. Maybe. I'll just, just, right, can I finish what I was saying before you jump in? <laughs> you can, as long as you don't band me in with your dads. statements that you're making. <laughs> it was about I'm being dad dads. and I, I don't Good. feel like I'm a competitive dad. So he's dad. talking about a tribe. I'm opting out. If you're a competitive dad, this is your time. Anybody put them to sleep. Just put <laughs> no, them to that. sleep. I can do that. Right. Anyway, <laughs> this is Dad Break. Back in so the room. Back in the room. We've got some of our lovely listeners, followers, uh, community. They've um, sent us a little message and they want to say something nice about their kids or something nice that's happened to that. So if you want to do it, get on our Facebook group and just send us a little message. So the first one is an old friend of the show. Mr. Luke Price. Oh, hello, Lukey. Hey, Lukey. Yes. And he's... He's going to Lu- love us calling him Lukey. I know, Luke, yeah, I'm uh, dead now. Luke, he's an ex co- Luke is an ex-copper from yeah. uh, a Metropolitan Policeman. I don't like him. He's too good looking. He is. He's a gorgeous he's, man. He, yeah. That's, I'm going to punch him. And he's now got a very <laughs> successful uh, security company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good luck punching him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got to get those bouncers down from London to get them. So. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it's his young lad Finn's 10th birthday yesterday. Ah, happy, happy birthday, birthday Finn. We want to say Happy birthday to happy Finn. Birthday. Um, mm-hmm. Then we've got the lovely Joel Shepherd. Uh, nice one, bro. He's got a young daughter called Maggie, and she had a particularly good day at school. Oh, wow. Well, okay. so okay. well can done, Maggie. Go can on. I backstory it a little bit just to say that not only has Maggie been amazing at school today, but Maggie lives in Spain. So yeah. she's, she, her family are naturally English speaking. She's at a Spanish school. Okay. Um, so well done, Maggie, mate. That's yeah. fantastic. You'll be out Spanish in me in no time. <laughs> May amigo. <laughs> <laughs> You've already beat Dan. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, and we got one more, which is the lovely Don Murray. Uh, he's our Nottingham dad, an amazing young young. He's not a young. He's bald. Don't mean he's in his forties. He, <laughs> That's an insult. <laughs> off. Yeah. No. He <laughs> illustrate. You're bald. Bald <laughs> illustrator. Yeah. Oh, awkward. Back in the room. Do you want um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, take, the, take the sword. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a uh, young Jacob who's um, he's had a very, very talented little footballer or big footballer as he now is. It's like playing for two new teams. And uh, two. young Megan, his little daughter, has just passed her ballet exam. Oh, so wow, really? Six out to uh, Jacob and Megan, and then they're going to come down here mm. in a couple of weeks. I haven't seen them for a long time. So. Nice. Awesome. Big up the knot. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Have I've, you got any? Sorry, go I, I've got a dad brag. Go on, him. Uh, I've got a dad brag in the Emma, my daughter. Um, she's just had her GCSE options. She wanted to do Spanish, didn't get into Spanish, and got lumped with French. Was a little bit anxious about it, and she's just had her first French test, and and came highest in her class by like fifteen marks. Mm. So her French is like stronger than her Spanish. So I did really like well done. I know she surprised herself, and I'm really proud of that. And also, my son's girlfriend. So I'm not technically her dad, but she passed her theory test today. So Abby, well Whee! done. I'm well really, done, really, really well impressed done. with that. Yeah, well, well done to, to her. But what you just said there just made me my blood boil. It's like what? I'm going to go to school, yeah, and I actually I want to go and work in Spain as a doctor. So right, you have to do French. So like, I don't. I want to do Spanish. And she's been put into French. Yeah, what is wrong with you, schools? I was exactly like that. I caught fire and was like, "Hang on," because like as a family, we've got a plan. Kate and I 
want to move to Spain. Yeah. So it made sense that like if she's going to have a parent living in Spain, she learns Spanish. And I was like, oh, really? Well, do you want me to speak to the school, see if there's anything they can do to change it? And she went, actually, French is the only class where I've got any of my mates from last year in. And I went, so you're cool with it? And she went, yeah. And I thought, okay, actually, social and emotional needs come yeah, first. Of course. She can learn a language as an adult if she chooses. Mm. It's more important that she's got a friend at work with her. Doesn't that also sort of scream of entitlement that if every parent tells them what they can do, they've got to run this huge organisation and take the feelings of maybe 1,500 kids All right, into... So no, people I'm just can wondering. make decisions about your your no, 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 child. No, no, and, no, 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 no just, I'm like? just playing devil's advocate. Mm. That if everybody complains to them and they're saying, "What well, we want to," they don't. They, the schools and the education are so underfunded and so stressed that if everybody sort of complains, how are they allowed to do their jobs? So that I would counter that with the fact that if they actually if they really focused on their students and their pupils as individuals and their needs and did their best to nurture those and honour those, then uh, the funding would become available because more people would be happy to pay taxes. I think that's not, they, so that's a government. That's not the, the teachers are spending their time. Rabbit really. hole. Yeah. This, anyway. uh, back to that brag. Yeah, it yeah, totally yeah. is, yeah. But, um, yeah. Don't blame the teachers, blaming the government. You should have a jingle like, rabbit hole. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit hole, hole, down, hole, down, down, down. down. Dan, I'm throwing you the rope, I'm pulling you back yeah, out no, of the hole. That's, that's, that's well said, but that is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. a big conversation. We could go for hours Dan, have you got any brags? Um, yeah, I got a little brag. Not brag. Um, my boy um, is just, he's playing for a couple of football teams and he plays his first game on Sunday for his new big boy team. Nice. Because so I don't know anything about football. I don't even know what the offside rule is. Do you know what position he plays? Uh, normally he's Ball kicker. A, a lot of goals. <laughs> so so he's up front. He's somewhere. not a goalie. No, he's not, no, he's not a goalie. Uh, <laughs> an all, an all you, you summed it up then when you just went striker. Striker. <laughs> yeah, he's not 1970. He, he's an all-rounder. He's an all-rounder, but the, the, I don't anything, know anything about football. I never was really interested as a child. Mm -hmm. in it, even though my dad was really good and I always felt a bit like a disappointment because he was so good. Yeah. Um, but to see my boy do, I get really competitive when I see him. But then I'm going to have to start going to games on a Sunday and probably making friends with other dads on the touchline and trying to fake the funk. Hello, up the Reds. Did you see the match on Saturday? <laughs> oh, oh, that was... Um... You could just go along as a dad. You don't have to know anything you about football. Know anything. You know, if your to lad's your like... Son. Yeah, exactly. If your no. lad's having a, a tough match... Yeah. Be there for him, and if he's having a great match, help him celebrate it. And it doesn't matter if you know what the, whether or if not. If he's having a tough decision. match, can't I just bully him to do better? <laughs> oh, dude! <laughs> Intervention. I'm yeah. I, I need to take a ten-second breath break. <laughs> I'm joking. I know you are, but it's not okay. funny. <laughs> no, it is. right. Next subject is what have we got going up? I got a dad brag. Go on, dad brag. Go on, him. Dad brag. Dad brag. <laughs> yeah, I'm lost. Um, uh, just a quick one then, because I know we run out of time. Uh, so my kids home educated. We we let them sort of well learn, done. do things they want to do. Mm. Um, glue sniffing. Glue sniffing. No, it's not gonna. <laughs> um, Alfie is now eleven. He wants to start working towards doing stuff. Uh, one thing he wanted to do was engineering. Now it's sort of animal stuff, so it could be veterinary. So we said, look, if you whatever those paths you go down, English and maths going to be important for you. Um, so he's now started GCSE Maths at 11 and he's picked up the book and he is flying through it. Mm, um, he, you know, it, it proves that you don't need to be taught to learn. Yeah. You, you only mm. need the, the tools to be able to learn yourself. Mm. You know, you have the ability to learn. Someone learned, you know, who, what about the first person that learned maths? They didn't get taught it, did they? The, so it's well, look at the Wright brothers. They built bicycles and flying yeah. machines and all that. I mean, there's, yeah. there's meant to be nine types of intelligence, you yeah. know, visual intelligence, all this stuff. So instead of like repeating parrot fashion all the time, as you do in school, I mean, it's a lot better nowadays than it was back in our days. When yeah, you but get it's still a long front, way yeah. from it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm not a big fan of schooling, so I'll take my hat off to you. Thanks. My proverbial skin. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think, no, yeah, I think you're right. I th if, if we can be more child-led, Mm. In that they come to us and tell us what they want to know, yeah, and, and and just make the resources available, then ultimately, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's going to change the world. It yeah. is mm. new thinking. Fever. You got a dad brag? Um, mine's very general, but I'm I, I'm I'm just very blessed to have some beautiful girls that are strong and and hopefully all grow up to be independent and sort of more free free 
thinkers, not three thinkers. <laughs> my F's and my T's. Three fingers. Three fingers. <laughs> <laughs> they got... No, oh, no. Jesus oh, God. No. I didn't expect whole... it to go down that route. <laughs> that was a school Do you know disco. What? Do you know what? I wasn't even... My head wasn't even in that space, so you guys took Good. it that way. I was thinking, let's not go there. Anyway, what's yeah. next? Next, I think we're going to have one more tune. Are we? <laughs> Um, and then we are going to interview our beautiful guest and get into tell some stories about the tunes you play, the art you do, mm-hmm. and the, the wonderful stuff you create. And I think you've got some Pleasure. examples to yep. uh, mm-hmm. show us as well. Mm-hmm. Example. Yep, sure. Yeah, he's got quite a gravelly yeah. voice, isn't he? Example. Oh, he's, used to do, he's a rapper, isn't he? Not a rapper. Singer. Is he? Yeah, you're looking at me like I'm weird. Right. Um, <laughs> so this next song is. Are we going Planet Patrol? Next? That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and again, it's in that sort of general, very general chronological order. So this is when I first sort of got into to hip hop, that sort of eighty three, eighty four. So how and old I think were you then? Was sort of thirteen. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen, something like that. And um, sorry, guys. Yeah. Are we yeah. not doing five minutes of funk? Oh, oh, what's that? We, oh, yeah, that's, we got... Um, that's what oh, we meant to be mixes. doing. Uh, well, it didn't get the five minutes of funk intro, so I skipped past five minutes of funk to the track. Ah, oh, right, thought. yeah, that's my... <laughs> okay. my edit we'll point, do, edit point. Okay, so... No, we'll do, we'll do... Carry on, we'll do five minutes of funk in a bit after we talk Well, I'm going to... I think we do it now because I wasn't going to have trouble editing this. Okay. It needs to be in the order. So we have now... Bum, 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 bum! Our regular section, five minutes of funk, and this is for any of you... DJs or wannabe DJs out there put together five tracks that will crucify the dance floor and make you look happy and with a story to tell. So now we've got one from the lovely Rob Life, um, very, very, ta- Life. Uh, nice very, one, very um, talented DJ. He's put together a few tunes to rock out to. So nice. let's do five minutes of funky stuff oh, from yes. Rob. Hey, man. Yeah. Y'all ready? Ready, baby. Hit it. Uh. Good goodness. Thank you. 
Get up where she 